Hello Biology 400 students, this is Mr. D with what I hope to be a succinct and enjoyable screencast for uh, translation. Specifically, the role that mutation plays in translation. So, your learning targets for, for this unit are, are, are an extension of page 69. Um, you just, uh, we're, we're talking about translation and converting mRNA uh, to proteins. So if you want to take a look at page 69 in your unit packet, you can see uh, everything you'll, you'll need to know there. Also, there's, there's pages 100 and 102 in your unit packet, which um, are both extensions of the protein synthesis activity, but they talk about specifically um, changes in, in translation and the consequences that, that you might see, which is what mutation uh, actually refers to. And then finally, uh, on page 107 and 108, there's a specific uh, worksheet called Mutation Practice that you can also use to aid in your um, understanding of what mutation really is. And then section 9.7 of your text, uh, Translational Errors, that's page 253 to 254. That'll uh, mention mutation as well. You can uh, look at those diagrams and, and some information there. So, I mean, a mutation is just a change from the normal genetic code. So, normally, ge the genetic code is translated and, and a correct protein is formed. But when you, when you have a mutation, that means that somewhere along the line, some change in the, in the amino acid sequence has caused an error in the protein. So, a protein, if you, if you remember, is just a long strand of amino acids called a polypeptide chain. And those amino acids are linked together by, by peptide bonds. So you can think of it as it's a polypeptide chain. There's amino acids strung together by, with, those, with those peptide bonds. And so if you inserted an incorrect amino acid in there as a result of the mutation, um, that creates a problem with the uh, structure of the protein, and, and it's not going to be able to do its role as well. So the whole entire uh, concept of translation, as we've learned, is, is dealing with these codons and that deals with specifically this thing called a reading frame. So we have groups of three codons, um, and that's what the, the ribosome reads, and that's what the tRNA is, has the anti-codon for. So our reading frame is broken up into these three distinct segments. So here we have uh, the segment AAU, for example. That's, that's the group of three, that's a codon, and so um, from there we have more groups of three that are, that are added on. So the, the big problem with mutation um, will actually deal a lot with these reading frames and, and how they change based on what type of mutation we'll see. So a mutation is just any change in the nucleotide sequence of your DNA. Um, and it can result from a number of things, but it's basically just you have a sequence in your DNA that that, that gene codes for a specific protein, and then a change in that nucleotide will thusly change the, change the codon potentially, and as a result, you have a, a different protein. And it could be non-functional, it, it, it could be just fine, but the changing the amino acid is, is what the mutation really comes down to. Um, also, so you have, you have uh, mutations that can, that can be a result of crossing over, which is a, which is a process in meiosis, um, where the chromosomes kind of line up and they get kind of inter intertwined in each other and part of a chromosome goes to another part of a chromosome and if that part is, if a gene is interrupted by that then we have a, a large mutation whereas a single base pair you could have a, a T change to a C or an A change to a C um, accidentally or bond to the wrong nucleotide and that would be a single base pair but it could still have some pretty uh, nasty consequences. Um, and then we have the, those, and then we, we talk about those consequences, the change in the reading frame. Um, so that reading frame is those three codon sequences, um, but sometimes it might shift where the reading frame is, and uh, if there's a deletion or an addition, so if you shift the reading frame, the entire three codon sequence then is, is different. And we'll, we'll look at an animation that kind of documents the exact uh, mechanism for that and, and what, it, what it kind of looks like so you can get a better picture of it. 
So let's look at a specific animation now uh, that, that details this process. A mutation occurs by base substitution when an incorrect base is incorporated into DNA. Some base substitutions occur because purines and pyrimidines exist in two structural forms. The most common form results in base pairing between adenine and thymine and between guanine and cytosine. However, the hydrogen atoms can move to form a base with altered hydrogen bonding properties, creating a tautomeric shift. When a tautomeric shift occurs in adenine, the adenine can bond to cytosine. A tautomeric shift in thymine allows it to bond to guanine. This error in DNA replication is passed on to the cell's progeny. The change in a single nucleotide in the DNA results in a change in the corresponding nucleotide in messenger RNA. The change in the codon can result in a different amino acid being incorporated into the protein. So there's our animation where we see the um, consequences. So specifically for this one, we have a different amino acid, whereas it was lysine in the wild type. Here's arginine that's actually being coded for. So if you if you want, you can go ahead and pause it right now and and uh, try these try these questions online or just right now on by yourself, and uh, we'll see what the answers are. Um, so let's go through these. After a tautomeric shift in adenine, uh, we saw that that resulted, that hydrogen moved, and it resulted in a bond with cytosine. Mutation that causes a change in a single nucleotide in DNA, we saw that that, as a result, changes the, the nucleotide in, in mRNA. So remember, DNA acts as that template, so the mRNA is going to be changed as a result of a change in DNA. In a tautomeric shift, hydrogen atoms move to form a base with the altered hydrogen properties. So we saw that hydrogen atom in adenine specifically kind of shift to that, that center carbon and it created an, an opportunity for cytosine to form a, a two, two hydrogen bonds with adenine. And then a mutation can, that changes a single nucleotide can result in a different amino acid. Um, this one is true because remember um, that codon reads three specific ones and if it was if it happened to to change to a different different nucleotide it'll be a different amino acid and then DNA, DNA mutations are passed on to a cell's progeny that's also true so remember your DNA is your inheritance molecule so if there's a change in your DNA that's the change in in what's being inherited so all the progeny or all the the replicated cells from that specific cell will have that mutation and look at that we got them all right so let's get back to our, our diagram here. So here we have a, an example of these two different types of mutations and we'll get into the specifics of them. Uh, but basically you can, you can think of it as a substitution or a deletion or addition. So uh, this, the substitution is when one of the nucleotides is changed but the, the, the reading frame remains the same. And then a deletion or addition results in a change in the reading frame as a result of a nucleotide being removed or, or added. So let's look at a specific example of, of what a mutation might look like. This is called sickle cell anemia and uh, this is a red blood cell on the left that that has this trait whereas a normal red blood cell that looks like this donut uh, this is the wild type or the normal protein that's being coded for and uh, let's take a look at what that specific sequence might look like. So hemoglobin is the substance in, in your red blood cell that helps carry oxygen in your blood. So normal hemoglobin has this amino acid, proline, uh, glutamine, and arginine. But in sickle cell hemoglobin, that glutam glutamine is replaced with a valine, and that's a result of an error or a, or a mutation in this DNA sequence. So instead of CTT, it's CAT. And as a result, you get a different amino acid, which has a consequence for the, for the success and, and function of that protein that hemoglobin protein. This is what we call a, a point mutation. So that's where there was a single nucleotide. Um, so if it acts on a single or a few nucleotides, it's called a point mutation. And uh, the consequence was for this one was just changing that single amino acid. Um, but it actually ends up having pretty consequential results. 
so this this is also an example of a substitution mutation so instead of T you're substituting in A there's also those insertion and deletions um, or addition and deletions where you are adding a nucleotide and that will change the reading frame for for each um, successive amino acid or, or codon after that so let's talk about those deletion or insertion mutations those are the ones that that can that can result in in horrible mutations because they shift the entire uh, reading frame after that that's what's called a, a frame shift um, so let's take a look at what that looks like in another animation The nucleotide sequence in DNA determines the nucleotide sequence in messenger RNA and, consequently, the sequence of amino acids in a protein. A mutation in the DNA can result in a change in the amino acid sequence of a protein. One type of mutation that can occur, either spontaneously or as a result of a mutagen, is the addition of one or more nucleotides during DNA replication. Because translation of a gene begins with a specific codon and proceeds one codon at a time, the addition of an extra nucleotide shifts the codons in the mRNA. This type of mutation is termed a frame shift mutation. A frame shift affects all amino acids incorporated beyond the original site at which the addition occurred. If the new codon generated by the frame shift is a stop codon, the protein synthesized will be shortened and is often non-functional. Another type of frame shift mutation occurs when a nucleotide is deleted during DNA replication. Deletion of a nucleotide in DNA results in a change in the codons in messenger RNA from the point of the deletion and changes in the amino acids inserted into the protein. So that kind of illustrates to us the, the consequences of, of what, what can happen when those insertion or deletions occur. So let's again, if, you, if you'd like, you can pause it here and uh, attempt these questions and then see what, if your answers correspond to what, to what we got. Um, the nucleic acid sequence in mRNA is determined by, that is B, the nu nucleotide sequence in DNA. Remember, DNA acts as that template. If a frameship mutation causes a stop codon to be inserted into the DNA sequence, this one is that the resulting protein will be too short and non-functional. So remember, a stop codon stops the formation of a protein, stops building those amino acids. So as a result, the uh, protein will be too short if you put a, a stop codon prematurely in that, into that strand. A nucleotide deletion in DNA replication causes the amino acids inserted after the deletion to be incorrect. So remember, we saw that as a consequence of that, of that deletion, um, all the the frame was shifted and so every single codon after that was different and as a result all the amino acids were different the addition of a single nucleotide to the DNA sequence causes a frame shift mutation that is true um, remember those codons are then shifted over in a frame shift mutation all of the amino acids before the shift are changed that one is false remember it's after the shift um, so after that after that mutation is where the frame shift actually occurs. Submit our answers. Oh, we got an error in the. That's all right. Trust me, they were all right. <laughs> so, in this, in the way that the deletion or insertions are, are most disruptive, substitutions um, depend on kind of where the substitution actually occurs. So. If they're in the first of, or second base of your of your codon, um, it almost will always create a change in the amino acid sequence. But the substitution of the third base in the codon doesn't always change that. Um, this is what's called wobble. So, in the third in the third base of the codon, when you look at your amino acid chart, if you change the third base, it often still codes for the same amino acid, and that kind of helps protect the 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 translation process. From, ha from incorporating some of these harmful mutations. So depending on where the substitution occurs can depend on, on how, um, how consequential it, it'll be for the, for the future of, the, of that cell. So what causes mutations? Um, we have errors in DNA replication. So remember, even after proofreading, there's a 1 in 10 million chance that, that there's going to be an error during replication. 
Uh, so, I mean, it's just it's just a, a quality of of the enzymes that we have working in 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 our cells. This isn't always a bad thing, though, because remember, you need genetic variation, otherwise. Uh, you're you're going to be in trouble if if there's some sort of environmental change that requires an adaptation. So if everyone was had the same genetic code when that smallpox hit, um, there would be no one who might be more more immune to it or might have a stronger stronger resistance to that disease. And as a result, probably everyone would have died, and there wouldn't be humans on the earth anymore. So just an idea to think about. And then also those those crossover uh, chromosome crossovers in in meiosis can change if they interrupt a gene can have consequences. There's also uh, chemical factors and physical factors. So UV radiation, remember sunlight can come in and sometimes it, uh, it causes skin cancer and that's a result of UV radiation. Also x-rays can have a, an effect on your DNA. And then there's also chemicals like DDT. Uh, that was a pesticide that was used. It was very common in I want to say the 50s or the 60s and it ended up um, killing a, a lot of birds. Um, it didn't kill any humans necessarily, but it still um, had this, caused this error in replication. And as a result, bird, bird shells became very, very thin. And they figured out it was the DDT that was, a, that was the uh, cause of that. So they outlawed it in, in America, but it's still being used in, in some other areas. So the consequences of, of a mutation are, are often sometimes different. Many of them, uh, and especially for those frame shift ones, they, they just cause the organism to, uh, to fail. The organism will die because the protein is so essential that if there's an error and it's not made correctly, you're not going to be able to survive. Um, some, are, some are beneficial. Um, so let's look at this example, this peppered moth. Here we have a moth that's, uh, that's darker colored. Here's one's lighter colored. This mutation that, that causes darker colored moth, that, that moth is able to blend in better and as a result has a, more, has, has a higher likelihood of uh, surviving. There's also this melanistic penguin. Um, it's kind of unclear whether or not that's going to be an advantage or not, but it's still a pretty cool and interesting looking mutation. So this is what drives natural selection. I mean, look at this moth. It, if it's since it's so much darker, it blends in, and and it, it's less likely to to be a victim of predation, and that means that um, it's more likely to pass on its genes, and as a result, natural selection will act, and uh, you might see more moths in that area if they're living in that specific habitat that have that darker color. Um, so if they're passed down to the gametes, or that's their uh, their sex cells that um, create the offspring, um, they can they can be beneficial, and that that's the driving force for natural selection. Thanks, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed uh, your your uh, mutation screencast, and I'll see you guys later.